Nagy köszönettel szeretek mindenkit, én Tarnóci Balázs vagyok, ez pedig a Bide Nation Incorporated hatodik része, ahol is a Nürnbergi Embedded World konferencia és kiállításra látogatta el cégünk az Inquiry Labs képviseletében. A mai részben négy interjút láthattok, ha nem tudtok angolul továbbra is kapcsoljátok be a feliratokat, jó szórakozást kívánok! My name is Paul Torsen. Um, I started and run Viking Software together with my wife. Viking Software is about bringing UIs to embedded devices. So the idea that you have a small computer, something with own, that only does one thing, for example, the user interface on a washing machine or an industrial oven or something like that, then that's what we would help another customer with. The more important is, How do you interact with the computer? How do you give it commands? That that's the really tricky part. That's where you need someone who can help to really teach you how should we do this? This is hard. So we have a couple of, of different applications that we want to show here. The first is not really an application and, and uh, that is this uh, the rocket here. Um, which is an example that we work for uh, the European Space Agency, ESA, for a project. And um, this is an ongoing project where we are helping them have a tool where you can sort of draw little boxes and uh, arrows, and that will signify sending a message from the ground station to the satellite. So it's about showing this, this communication in graphical view. Because it's hard. NASA has just had a, a satellite sent to Jupiter, and talking to a satellite at Jupiter, I mean, is difficult. I mean, you send a message to it, and two days later you get a response. But in the meantime, you've sent three other messages. We we cannot handle that kind of communication in our heads as software developers. So you need a tool to help that. Right next to it is an animation uh, application which is um, it's about creating a system that's useful for people who like to do animations on paper because that's a specific way of working. A német Fraunhofer IIS intézet több találmányával is jelen volt a kiállításon, de én első körben az úgynevezett energiacsapolásról kérdeztem meg őket. Yeah, we are the Fraunhofer IIS in Nuremberg developing energy harvesting systems. And uh, for example, that means g gaining energy out of ambient energy sources, for example here temperature difference. So in this case, you see it's a cold pipe, which is colder than the ambient air. And this cold pipe, um, it's like you see here on this tablet, it's three degrees Celsius temperature difference from the bottom part of the sensor to the heatsink on the top. And this 3 degrees Celsius is enough to supply a microcontroller and a Pluto Star Energy Transceiver inside this module and transmit the data, which means the temperature here of the pipe and the heatsink temperature to this tablet here. Another thing what we are doing is gaining energy out of vibration. And uh, here we have um, vibration with 60 Hz and a vibration amplitude of about 0.05 to 0.1 G. And uh, you can see basically here, uh, that's the vibration profile we are sending directly out of the sensor. Um, so it's measuring the vibration and uh, uh, uses this vibration to, um, to uh, supply the sensor here inside. And it's also transmitting with Pluto Star Energy here to this tablet. Azon ugyan nem lepődtem meg, hogy az elektromos autók töltőállomásait milyen könnyen fel lehet már törni, azon viszont annál inkább, hogy a Fraunhofernél erre milyen hatékony megoldást dolgoztak ki. First of all, we're trying to show a secure charge point for automotive electric vehicle charging. Um, as the problem is that most of the current charging points are just out there in the field, unsecured, unsurveilled, easy to breach, as has been shown a couple of years ago, easy to hack. And what we are, have implemented here is, first of all, to protect user data on the um, device. So if users start charging, um, the, the, the user data gets sent to the charge point just in case the charge point goes offline and the user still wants to either charge later or continue charging, that's the case. Um, second, 
we implemented a secure VMware update mechanism to prevent downgrade attacks, for example, and uh, system attestation to make sure that our charge point is in a valid and trusted state. So if you go here, currently the system is in a valid state. As a charge point operator, we can go and unseal the user data and see who are the users that have been charging here and more of their data maybe. And what we can do now is a little um, attack just by inserting this USB stick into the charge point. So if we do that, just insert it. And uh, after the system reboots, it will have a so-called hacked firmware installed on it. Mm, I see. So what we do not want the attacker to do is to get access to our user data. Um, in our case, the attacker also just unlocks charging, so there's a constant energy flow. You just have to plug your vehicle in. We can go ahead and try to unseal the user data again. And we will see that we do not get access to um, furthermore, we can uh, test our system to make really sure that it is not in a valid state. So the um, re received attestation data is not equal to the state we expect. Therefore, we know it's hacked. So we can just go ahead and upgrade our firmware version to the most current one, which is not hacked. So it takes a couple of seconds again until the system is rebooted. And once we are in a valid state again, we can attest that it's valid again. So now it's rebooted and we attest. And everything is as expected. And also, we can now again go to unseal and we should have access to our user data stored on the charge point over there. Right, so now the charge point could go offline. The user could come back, authenticate himself as Carl and start charging again. Végezetül pedig a nem annyira autókkal, sokkal inkább az automatizálással foglalkozó szintén német logikóhoz kérdeztem legújabb termékükről. We are on the market since 30 years now. We are a software producer, so we're making software for uh, automation industry, different types of automation industry, for example, building automation, energy sector, automotive sector, and we are making um, a programming tool for programming the controllers and we are also making the runtime which runs on the controllers. We have a new version of Logica 3, of course, of the programming tool, a new version of the runtime. We have different types of runtime, so we are providing uh, runtimes for uh, microcontroller-based systems and for IPC-based systems. And what we have too is a new version of a web-based uh, programming tool for ma uh, making a, a PLCs programmable with, with the browser, with the web browser. What new features does it have? You can uh, make libraries with Logica 3. Uh, so you make library blocks with Logica 3, and then you can load the libraries to the PLC. And the, the top-level application is then programmed via the browser uh, with the so-called LogiWeb editor. It's a browser-based uh, editor based on JavaScript, and you can communicate uh, with the PLC and make the application logic, the top-level application logic, uh, with the web editor. I think the, the direction is uh, to, to bring everything to the cloud. So, uh, Industry 4.0. Yes, uh, and so we need uh, browser-based programming of PLCs and also the parameterization of the, of the different PLCs and the distribution of applications to different PLCs, uh, edge computers, uh, for example. I think it will go in this direction.